I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making an almond pound cake. Mm. For my almond pound cake, this is what you're gonna need. Sugar, vanilla, eggs, shortening to grease the pan, baking powder, salt, flour, all-purpose flour, almond paste, unsalted butter, and sour cream. I've stated many times that I'm not a baker, and that's still true, but that doesn't mean I don't love baking. I still try and practice, I still try and bake when I can, and I enjoy it immensely. This almond pound cake has been in the works for a little while now. I finally got to a point where I'm really happy with it, where it's consistent results. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. It's easy, it's quick, and it's absolutely delicious. First thing I wanna talk about is oven temperature. We are baking this at 325 in a conventional oven or 300 in a convection oven. I'll put the conversions in the description down below for Celsius, but this cake is super dense and it needs a very long time, about an hour in the oven, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. And if it's too high temperature, you're gonna get it burnt on top and not cooked in the middle. Before we grease it, I wanna talk about my parchment paper. This is parchment paper, mine just happens to be brown. Parchment paper is not wax paper. You do not use wax paper in this. Wax paper has wax and will make your cake taste like crayons. Find parchment paper. And the reason why it's so long is, is because I'm gonna make a sling so I can take this cake out easily. Um, and what all I did was is I took my cake pan and I laid it on my parchment and I kind of just cut it to this inside measurement, right? I made a mark here, made a mark here, so it sits flat on the inside of my pan. And when I put it in here, you'll see it'll hang over the edges, so I'll be able to lift it up and get it out of the pan. I'm using vegetable shortening. You can use butter, that's fine, but I'm using the vegetable shortening because I think it's just neutral. I don't need uh, the butter in here. I just want a neutral oil to make sure this doesn't stick. You may ask why I'm greasing it up, and I'm using parchment, insurance. I wanna make sure that this comes out of the pan in one piece. So I'm greasing and parchmenting. Is that a word? Parchmenting, okay? Par I'm greasing and putting parchment in, right? So I have a nice amount of vegetable shortening in there and now I'm gonna lay my parchment in. There you go. And stick it to the sides. That's what's really cool about using the, the parchment and the fat is that once the fat's in there, it kind of sticks. So my pan is prepared, I can mix up my cake. One of the ingredients I use in this is almond paste, and almond paste usually comes in little bricks or little cans. You don't have to use this brand, it's just the brand that my store had. And I learned a way to deal with this, right? A lot of times when you put this together with the sugar and the butter, you get big chunks of almond paste, uh, and it doesn't really incorporate really well. So one of my pastry chef friends told me, get your almond paste and grate it on the large holes of your grater. This way, when you cream it with the butter and the sugar, you don't have big chunks of almond paste anywhere. So that's one of the best tips I've ever gotten in dealing with almond paste. But you have this nice, it looks almost looks like shredded cheese. And that's what I want. This is how it's gonna incorporate nice and easy with the butter and the sugar. I've gathered all my ingredients and before that I wanna get my dry ingredients together. I'm just gonna use some salt some baking powder into my flour. I'm just gonna give it a whisk, just so that I don't have any pockets of salt or baking powder. And then I'm gonna crack my eggs. Crack on a flat surface so we don't get shells in there. My eggs are room temperature, my butter's room temperature, my almond paste is room temperature. I'm going to put my vanilla into my eggs. And I very rarely measure vanilla because I am not a pastry chef, like I said before. Just get my vanilla in there. Let's set those aside. Let's get the mixer and mix this cake up. I'm using a stand mixer. If you don't have one, you can use a hand mixer for this, or you can use a spoon. It just takes a little more work if you have to mix this by hand. I have the paddle attachment on my machine. My almond paste is in the machine. I'm gonna add my sugar. And I'm gonna add my butter. Oh wait, can I, can't get it in there, let me go. Now I'm gonna cream everything together. I'm gonna to take my butter, almond paste, and sugar and whip it together till it's nice and light. Uh, start on low speed, because if you start on high speed, you're gonna get sugar everywhere. I gotta say, I love the smell of almond paste. It reminds me of all these Italian cookies that I grew up with. It's so nice.
This is now well combined. I'm gonna give it a quick scrape. Just if there's any little pieces of butter or sugar that didn't get in there, scrape your sides, go down to the bottom. Now we're gonna add our eggs slowly. So we're just gonna add our eggs one by one. This is our egg and vanilla mixture. Add an egg, let it combine, add another egg. So that's nice and whipped together. Again, I'm gonna get in there and scrape down my sides. Make sure I get to the bottom in case there's anything kind of sitting on the bottom and not combined. Now I'm gonna add my sour cream. Get it all in there, nice. Oh, make sure you get it all over because you know it wouldn't be a recipe by me if you didn't get it everywhere. Now that my wet ingredients are all together, I'm gonna add my flour in two separate times. Basically the first time, just to kind of get it mixing. Again, start on very slow speed. Once this flour is incorporated, I'll add the rest of it. Okay, that's incorporated. Let's add the rest of the flour and let it go. Very nice. Cool. Let it go for about 10, 15 seconds, shut it off. I can take this off from the machine and get my pan and we'll throw this in the oven. Just came off the mixer. What I'm gonna do now is take everything off of the beater. Put that aside. There's also gonna be a few kind of like little dry patches of flour. I'm gonna scrape my sides, give it one last nice mix. Make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom. One of the keys here is not to over mix. Make sure we get all the flour incorporated. There's no lumps of flour. Get your pan and get into the pan. Make sure you make a mess. Try and get it all out. Good. Clean up your parchment paper. Spread it out lightly. Before I put it in the oven, I had a really great question for my director. She said, you don't have to shake it or tap it down or anything. No, we don't want to do that. Don't shake it, just spread it out nice and evenly, throw it in the oven. If you shake it or tap it down, we're gonna get some of those bubbles out and we want this to have some air bubbles in it. Very small air bubbles, but we want some air bubbles in it. So once it's in the pan, it goes right into the oven. All right, out of the oven. The almond pound cake has a beautiful color. It's been in for about an hour and 15 minutes now. All depending on your oven is how long it's gonna to take to cook. One of the best ways to test that it's done is you get a skewer, you can get a bamboo skewer. I have a metal one. I usually stick it into the center and pull out. If it comes out clean like this, it is done. If it comes out still wet and there's kind of chunks on it, you have to put it in the oven for a little longer. Before you start trying to take this out, let it sit in the pan for about 10 minutes. Once it sits in the pan, we're gonna let it cool slightly, and then we're gonna uh, take it out of the pan. So don't rush this because right now the cake is still very fragile and still needs to set up. The cake has been sitting for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go around the edges just to kind of release, make sure it's releasing because I want it to pop out. Let's see if it pops out. Oh, there we go. Excellent, look at that. So it pops right out. Now I'm gonna let it cool completely. It'll probably take about 45 minutes to an hour before we slice into it. If we still slice into it now, it's gonna kind of crumble and I want it to come together. So let it cool completely and then we'll give it a taste. It's my favorite time, time to taste. Let's cut into this. I'm using a serrated knife. A serrated knife is a little easier to slice with. So let's give it a slice. The cake is cooled for the most part. Let's look at the inside. Look at that. 
Look at that, isn't she pretty? So a nice tight crumb, just a little bit of bubbles there. Okay, let me cut a little bit of a slice for myself. What I love about this cake is that you get this really nice kind of crunchy and soft top. Mm. And a beautiful fluffy inside, but the top gets super crunchy. It's got a really nice almond flavor, but not overpowering. Put a little berries on this, a whipped cream. It is perfect. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch in the description down below. We also have a PO box down there. I wanna thank our Patreon patrons for supporting us. Thank you for the support. I wanna hear your comments. Leave me comments down below. I try and read them all. And that is my almond pound cake. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.